Hey guys, MC Mora here and I know it may be too soon, maybe we are in the off season but I think enough have changed about the game and we know more about it now that I figured why not talk about it tier impression or like who is really good right now, who needs help. I don't think the game changes that dramatically from the previous patch but there are some changes that I do think are worth noting. The first one, for example, is this one, right? Luke tier, because Luke is easily, clearly the best character in the game right now. They did nerf his crouching medium punch, this now have a tiny, teeny bit more recovery frames, so maybe like you can a little bit easier with punish it, but it's not a big deal. Still blossom block, the range is still gigantic, the hitbox is still nuts. You check drive rush, you pressure, you combo, you poke, you buffer, you eat, you sleep, you do everything with this crouching medium bunch. It is the move. It's like <laughs> it's like the god normal of Street Fighter 6. It's totally insane. And with the nerf to the others, especially JP, I think this kinda clearly easily positions uh, Luke to be in the top tier, right? He's easily the best character in the game. Now, I do believe we have different top three right now, right? And the first character I'm gonna put in there is, yes, Sean Lee. And the second one might surprise some people, but Kami. Uh, let's discuss Sean Lee first. When the modern craze was going on, where everyone was worried about modern characters, modern scheme, which character was very successful? Which one made EVO top eight? It was Sean Lee. And the reason for this was having Tenshu kicks on command, as well as having good access to a really strong fireball game and all of that, right? So the change here with Chun Li is that over time, and especially now that a lot of players, especially top players, have been using hitbox, having Tenshu kicks on command have become a reality. A lot of players, especially if you watch Leshar, he got this on command. Moki, he got this on command. Maybe for people like you and me, people who use this sort of controls, Shan Li is not the top two character. But if you got Headbox, this is a very complete character. You got the easy supers on reaction, and you got the Tenshu kicks on reaction. So if you're playing Shan Li, you got amazing walk speed, you got Fireball Drive Rush which is amazingly good for her. Uh, you got all of the save jump setups. One of the things that was missing from modern Chun-Li is her ability to like save jump setup. But with uh, classic Chun-Li, you get everything, right? You get the um, save jumps, you get the easy anti-airs, you get everything, right? She's very complete, very strong. This crouching medium kick being a seven frame normal is criminal. Uh, and having fireball drive rush, reaction and super, strong anti-airs. Shan Li got everything. I do really think Shan Li is a character that is very complete and got every tool in the book. She got everything she needs. And Kami is kind of in the same boat. I think Kami is the one character here that I am the least uh, sure about. But Kami, in my opinion, is like top three because of power creep, right? JB getting a little bit weaker. Ken getting a little bit weaker, she kinda crept her way into the top three, right? Now, I know some people are gonna put DJ in there, and I mean, I can totally understand this argument. We can, you can add DJ there, but I'm gonna keep DJ to top four, and I'm gonna round my top five with this guy, right? Uh, why is DJ not in my top three? And that is for a very, very simple reason. Um, it's mainly the nerfs to drive rush jab. Drive rush jab nerf is the sole reason for me that both Ken and DJ got substantially worse, right? So here's the thing, right? One of the main tactics with DJ and similar similarly for Ken is like you are controlling the space so with space with DJ you can poke with a medium kick you can go for the forward medium kick but this is slow drive impact uh, risky and all of that there is heavy kick but this also carries some risk you saw that or you drive Rajab the change that they made in this patch is if you happen to drive Rajab right low hitting attacks or attack with like lower profile hitbox like a crouching jab for example this is much better now at shaking this or like standing light kick right this now easy is easier to stuff maybe rashid didn't get the memo but 
This is now easier to stop. This happened to Ken, this happened to DJ. Standing light kick time moves are better against these sort of techniques. And uh, this is something that now DJ is a little bit weaker at because driver Jeff from this range with DJ was a very dominant tactic. This is something I had experienced firsthand. As someone who uses DJ a lot, this is something I've experienced firsthand where opponents matching crouching jab is much more likely now to stuff you out of driver jab where he used to win before now another change to him is this way where now you're in throw range so this is a little bit of a nerf to him now he kind of have to be a little bit more careful or space out a little bit better so i think dj is still kind of like in his uh, similar place maybe but still very very good character and you can make an argument for the top three spot and i will say that's fine honestly I think you I think you can have it both ways. Rashid, uh, this is the one that I know people are gonna say, Mura, you are crazy, you lost your mind, Rashid. <laughs> if Rashid was not top five, if Rashid was not totally busted, why would Angry Bird play Rashid? If Rashid was not as powerful as Ken, if not more, if he is not as powerful as Kami, if not more, although I do have Kami in my top three, why is Angry Bird playing Rashid? And I'll tell you why our three quarters of Rashid players playing him is because of this. In the context of Street Fighter, this <laughs> this monstrosity <laughs> is completely busted. I'll say, like, it, it, I don't typically speak of like broken things in fighting games, but this super from Rashid is completely busted and what makes it so strong is the fact that he gets to build meter uh so like he can throw it out there right and just go for like a light spinning mixer and he's still building gauge right and give him like multiple pressure sequences right so he throws it out there just the fact that let's say for example uh you are gonna try to uh Let's make it a punish counter throw because the opponent is like trying to parry whatever you're gonna do. Rashid doing this and effectively like building all of this gauge. That's actually nuts. That is nuts because he still get a mix. Like after two throws, he still get a mix. So it's very likely that you're gonna deal with this repeated leap around. And he got everything. He got this insane crouching uh, drive rush crouching light kick, which very long range for a crushing like light kick right and he gets to convert it's very easy for him to set up the level 2 super he got the anti-airs the ex reversals um he got everything he really does have everything and just him throwing fireballs in general like that is very very good as well because his fireball can be tricky to play around so very we have very complete character what puts him over the top is the level 2 super right uh, his level 2 super is just it's too much it, it, it's it's one thing in this game that i will say is actually broken and needs to be adjusted he needs to not build any gauge as long as that tornado is out i think that is the only way that you can balance that uh level two super right so it's very good and then obviously we got guile which is in a very good spot now that uh jp got a little bit weaker we got ken and i do think we obviously got jury and i'm gonna round these guys with blanca obviously right maybe even both blanca over here <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Uh, all of these are very, very powerful characters. This is, I think we are missing one. And if we're missing one and I have to put one from over here, obviously it is JP. Maybe I'll put JP even before Guile. I don't think he's fallen off that hard, uh, but he's certainly, and um, I think, I think that is real. I think that's good. Shut up, Rashid. <laughs> I think that is that seems good to me, right? I, I think these are my strict top five, but these guys are the five characters that come after. It's it's really hard though, because I feel like everyone here is kind of interchangeable. But JP um obviously had a little bit of fall from the grace. I feel like uh still JP players I, I I I I can't find them after this batch, like no one is playing JP. Very few, very few players are, but I still think he's really, really good. He's he, he just lost the crouching heavy match. I feel, I feel like this is the one that is most impactful. It's still pretty good, but he's still you, you don't get to swing and anti air like he used to. Right now, he's gonna get counter hit, right? So he have to be a little bit more mindful, and it is more prone to trading like that. This one, this is a big deal.
right? Oh, the amnesia, yes, it's a little bit worse. It's a little bit not as rewarding, but I think the anti-air, this is the change that is, uh, this is the change that actually matters the most. And the standing heavy punch being slightly more with punishable. These two together, I do feel like have impacted him right and one thing uh, i just i just mentioned about Rasid is that he uh, he now doesn't build any meter once od amnesia is out so if we if we make it so that uh, right see, see this he's not building any gauge when od amnesia is hitting so i feel like this is a substantial nerf to him overall still an amazing character but certainly just a little bit weaker blanca very proven commodity right now uh, he is proving to be successful and especially in tournaments i feel like blanca is one of the best tournament characters in the game his damage output his set play potential blanca shan he's just irritating and that makes him work so well in like a ranked or a tournament setting mm, he's pronto guile in incredibly powerful character incredibly strong uh his only weakness is like jp and i maybe cami being that relevant and uh, otherwise uh, I, and i feel like also blanca actually kind of negates guile a little bit but guile is a very solid character got all the tool he, he needs to win and i feel like maybe he also maybe gal players like in general um I feel like he could be a little bit more optimal, but overall, he's he, he's very, very good. He's very good. And Ken and Jury. Like I said, all of these characters, uh, they are interchangeable. Like, you can say Guile is in the top five, the last one in the top... And I was like, all right, I can entertain it. You can say Ken's still here, maybe JP, maybe Blanca. I feel like the tier list is really condensed when it comes to these guys, but we got to talk about who's more successful, right? And... DJ is very successful in tournaments. Rashid is very successful in tournaments. Mena is killing it with Blanca. Guile is doing really well. And will do even more now that JP is a little bit weaker. So maybe maybe something like this is more fitting. I don't know. And Ken obviously is still really good. Jury just won Capcom Cub. So uh, let's put her really high as well so all of them are amazing all of them are amazing for reasons you already know if you're watching this tier list you already know why these guys are so good right now let's talk about the mid tiers characters who are just okay and i'm gonna put marisa over there right and i know marisa is probably like the best mid tier character in the game and a lot of people are like marisa marisa is ridiculous i feel like marisa is one of these characters that the longer the game goes the weaker she will be because there are some stuff about her that people are now starting to exploit right for example her jab jab target combo right like this one uh now people are gonna start to go for the parry right and this this is one that is you like the timing is fixed so you can perfect parry it right perfect parrying this isn't incredibly difficult right so that is good uh there is also the fact that her back heavy bunch i'm seeing especially like japanese players i'm seeing them being able to perfect parry this one as well uh, in general i feel like because of her lack of defensive options as well and kind of straightforward game plan and the game kind of shifting towards like the rashid the blanca the install into completely busted level two supers that stuff being totally prevalent and being like super oppressive on uh, attack i feel like all of this have kind of weakened marisa a little bit she's still a very good character but i feel like she is slightly not as powerful as she used to right and next up here i'm actually gonna put ed right i'm gonna i'm gonna show you who i got in the mid tiers so we got ed we got dulcim and i do think ryu maybe even both ryu before ed actually or like their two are in the same tier um and I'm gonna put Aki as well, right? And Kimberly and Jamie, right? I think all of these guys are pretty good. Uh, let's switch to, over to Ed first, uh, because I feel like Ed is a character that got a lot of potential, right? He just came out, he's new. I think he's a character that got a room to grow, but he is proven to do well now. Like, uh, we've seen players like Ending Walker doing pretty good with him. He's starting to win tournaments. Momoshi is killing it with Ed, if you're watching a lot of his gameplay. I even saw Kakiru doing some good stuff with him. So this is a character that I think can do well. Ed is a character that is reliant on spacing and footsies. I think he's a character that got, he, he probably got some of the best footsies in the game, actually. And the way he can punish stuff 
is second to none i feel like especially when it comes to like with punishing and even punishment on block uh, for example if we're talking about a character like ken right uh, ken can walk forward and do that standing heavy kick very few character gets this punish counter here like the, the way ed can do it especially because of like the crouching uh, light kick this one is actually really good the range on it for a like a punish like this is great this beats most standing light kicks so that is great uh if your opponent happened to whiff this one is pretty good as well right so he got amazing uh whiff punishment and amazing punishment in general he's a character that is spacing dependent and people get better at spacing over time so with time people are gonna get better at spacing with ed and he's gonna be more and more powerful he does have some powerful rushdown as well especially like his corner situation his corner situation is really good he got safe pressure with the light snatcher uh, this one is really good people are gonna come up with more stuff for his level 2 and become more optimal so right now i do think ed is mid tier and he does have room to grow right i think ed is in a pretty good spot he obviously does have his flaws his defense is so so uh, but at least he does have an invincible reversal that you can use it's also not bad against fireballs actually like if the opponent's throwing fire it's like i've seen momoshi doing a lot but from the one star distance this is actually pretty good so having a sort of an anti-fireball answer is not bad obviously the anti-airs are a problem but really powerful players will have powerful anti-airs so i think good players will be able to make it work and there is like wish parry so he does have some options i don't think it's that dry for him overall he's gonna get better and i do think he's gonna get better as well because he's not really that gimmicky uh ryu ryu is a guy that did get better i think ryu is substantially better than he used to uh the main issue with ryu still is the fact that dungeon well it's better while this is totally ridiculous right now right while this is really good and all of that still the fact that when ryu boots dungeon when he activates dungeon he's still kind of deterred from throwing fireballs you still wanna like most of the time now i see you activate the engine and then you're fishing for like a hit like a heavy bunch into the activation to get some damage going and I, I think because of that it makes his gameplay now a little bit too predictable maybe maybe if they buff him so that he's able to still throw a regular hadoken with dungeon on then i feel like ryu would be in a pretty good place uh so he's better but i don't know if he's like all of that yet Right. I think he's better. He is certainly now a little bit closer to Ken than he used to, but he's still not. He's still not just quite there. Um, I actually think Jamie is maybe next because Jamie is also another character that I think is actually substantially better. Right? Uh, Jamie got pretty good and neutral, all things considered. So maybe against fireballs he struggled a little bit, but his neutral in general I do, I do think is pretty good he got some sheaths with stuff like fireball uh, drive rush heavy bunch this is like a drive rush jab but with a heavy so <laughs> it's even better as three hits so breaks drive impact so that's really good and the buff to throw i feel like this is one of the biggest buffs that he got and obviously level two super stacking and all of that so he he's overall a lot better i feel like overall jamie is a lot better he's up now from being like the hopeless bottom tier character and i feel like over time he will improve as well because he's a character that despite being pretty popular didn't get played that much but i still don't see him in the top 10 discussion it's still far away uh aki and dalsim they, 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 they kind of struggle because of similar reasons like they're both kind of free on defense uh dalsim even more so than aki but aki is a character that over time people have figured out like what she wants to do because when she first came out people tried to play aki as a zoning character this is something that we've seen repeatedly but now people have realized that this is a character that just want to drive rush and i uh, was especially like after fireball she want to get one hit and win off of that one hit right aki is this like set play monster her damage output is insane especially once she got like level 3 super her damage output her set play are very good and this buff to standing medium kick uh, standing medium punch is very good for her now that this is more active this gives her much better time for shaking like drive rush and uh obviously she's not likely to get a counter hit so she can convert that's good conversion was a crouching jab i feel like she's actually one of the most buffed character in the previous patch but kind of slept on right uh overall i think she is 
a character that have developed a little bit. I don't think she's bottom tier. Oh my god, my phone just dropped. I don't think she's that weak. She's all right. I think she is actually pretty all right. Uh, Dalsim, kind of in the same deal. He is a character that is naturally gonna take longer to develop than others. Obviously, his main issues is his defense. Once you get in, he can get kind of smoked, which is a little bit unfortunate. But I think he's still a pretty good character, all things considered, right? Um, especially once you're in burnout, Dalsim can really walk you over. So... Eh, I wouldn't put him at like one of the worst, but he, he's okay. And Kimberly, um, when when round works your way, <coughs> when pressure, when everything works your way, Kimberly is pretty good. But she is a character that certainly need buffs. I think Kimberly is a character that uh, do need some help, especially like her level two super, which is like almost like a completely useless super. Um, her neutral, she got standing medium kick, and this is like this is no joke. One of the best normals in the game. His stand, her standing medium kick is actually ridiculous, but she lacks otherwise. I think she lacks otherwise. Um, Maybe she did get a little bit over nerfed in the beta, although I don't want her to have an invincible reversal. I think what Kimberly needs the most is for her level 2 super to work, because currently her level 2 super is really weak, and maybe she doesn't need the big damage nerf, because Kimberly got a damage nerf until she activated level 3 super, and then she gets a damage buff. I really don't think that's necessary, to be honest. So maybe when she activates level 3, keep the movement buff, and just make her damage regular. I don't. I don't think she needs to do like less damage and then do level three and then she's. I think that's kind of ridiculous to be honest. So maybe, maybe, maybe with some help. And finally, we got the send help characters. We got Honda. We got Manon. I'm gonna actually put Zangief. I think Zangief is the best of these guys. Uh, let's keep it that way. Zangief, Manon, Honda, Lily. Uh, I think Zangief is the best out of these guys, right? Because the thing with Zangief is that he got some tools that can work, especially on like a high level in a top level matchups. Uh, Zangief got some okay normals. I think his normals are pretty good. He does have a lot of damage, right? So he can certainly rob you. Uh, SBD does still pretty good damage. The situation out after it isn't ideal, but it's okay. He got the level two super, which actually can be pretty good since it can allow him to like boot you in the corner his damage output in general is pretty fine I, I don't think it's fantastic but it's fine but obviously he does have issues he's so free on defense it is painful and he does have powerful options like <laughs> like this like she's with the drive rush into level 3 I hate the best 3 super is the scariest super in the game right because this does massive damage and now the fact that he got the ability to combo into it and they say that this is hit confirmable. So he, he does have he does have some strengths going his way, but obviously struggle is so real, right? Uh, if, you, if you're using Zangief, the struggle is real. There are moves that are almost utterly useless. Like too late in this game is like you, there's a reason like you never see anyone going for this move. Uh, the only reason I the only use I know of for too late is if you happen to get like the EX version because this builds a lot of meter. Right, take a look at the meter gain. It's actually really good for that. And the okay situation after this isn't that bad. But still, I think most gifts will still rather go for like the enhanced bile driver. So he struggles. He struggles. Zoners in general are or man grab characters in general are a struggle. And obviously the same can be said about Manon and Lily. Uh, <laughs> you know it, I've just made a video on why do grabblers struggle so much in Street Fighter 6. The main reason for the grabblers, the main reason that these characters are having issues with this game is that in Street Fighter 6 everything is okay, right? Like because of Drive Rush, everything in the game gives okay. But it seems like command grabs are where Capcom draws a line. Command grabs are where Capcom say, nope, you don't get OK. So like you can EXDP, get OK, you can fireball drive rush behind it, get OK. You can throw out a, a dumb wall that ha it can be beaten. I don't think about Rashid actually now that now that's oh my god I feel like I'm, I'm gonna keep going back to Rashid one change made in this game that makes Rashid's level 2 super completely unbearable <laughs> is the fact that uh, the fireball system and how it works so in previous games this was like three hits so you can do like an EX Hadouken or something and you would beat it but right now if he does it 
Even if I do like a dungeon fireball and throw an X fireball, right? I can't get rid of this. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> and that makes it so good, right? So you can do that, and that's totally fine. You can throw a sonic boom, drive rush behind it, totally fine. You can throw out a departure and attack me whenever you want, that's totally fine. You can throw out an X fireball, drive rush behind it, that's totally fine. But command grab and you wanna get Oki? Oh no, no, that's totally busted. And this is the main reason that all of these characters, ah, Honda is a special case. The main issue with Honda is that he's a character that is far too linear. Honda is like the most straightforward character in the game, and his gameplay completely get destroyed by Perfect Parry, which is why he isn't that prevalent. People have been really good at getting Perfect Parries these days. So, Command Grab characters, characters who need them to win, they will struggle because they will most likely reset to neutral, where they got to deal with characters who do better. I made a tweet about this and uh, it's something that's actually funny to me, right? So check this out, right? Uh, let's, let's, let's here compare Zangief to Marisa, right? Let's compare Zangief to Marisa. So with Marisa, you go for a command grab, right? And then you drive, say you drive rush medium kick, right? If you happen to get this to, to like, let's say for example, you get it to block first, right? Obviously, the separation here is shorter, but you get this to get blocked, you're still plus two, right? Which means that, at bare minimum, you're getting a grab, right? Or maybe you will go for a command grab as well. So, the situation here isn't bad at all, right? And let's say, for example, that Zangief, um, let's make it so that he is, uh, like, gonna try to wake up Jump or something. Let's say he's got try up to backdash on wake up, right? Right. Right. You're getting massive punishes on him, right? This is this is legit good command grab Oki. If I do the same thing with Zangief, I am almighty. You like, check, like, you see how far, how, how much further Zangief is, right? And even if she tries, like, like the only good thing he gets is like drive rush into light kick, and then you know, he's gonna have to drive rush again. So, the boss command grab situation just is not worth it for Zangief, Manon, and Lily. Marisa, she gets to have the safe jumps, she gets to have the really powerful pressure because her command grab actually means something, right? Because her command grab actually can lead to good, and obviously you can faint it with uh, Drive Rush Jab. So, funny enough, the non-grabbler Marisa is the one that got the best command grab pressure in the game, which eh, is kind of funny. Anyways, um, sorry for the rant about grabblers, I feel like I went on a tangent. <laughs> this It's becoming a trigger now that I am actually maining Manon. This is starting to get more and more on my nerves. But anyways, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts about this tier list. What do you think of it? Uh, do you think I'm crazy? Do you agree? What are your thoughts on the whole thing? If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It helps the channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon, Discord, Twitter, and Twitch pages in the description. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.